Anyway, thanks for coming. My name is Ed Hall. Some of you were here yesterday for the presentation I did on silent serials. Today we're going to be talking about the wonderful world of pulp fiction and pulp magazines. Uh, I edit and publish a magazine called Blood and Thunder, which is devoted to not only pulp magazines, but adventure, mystery, and melodrama in uh, popular fiction and popular storytelling of all kinds, movies, old-time radio. Uh, we publish quarterly, and although we primarily gear our copy to advanced collectors of pulp magazines, there's plenty in here for people who are just starting out, and it's a wonderful hobby, as I hope to convince you. Ah, excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you some characters. They all have something in common. Tarzan. Zorro, Buck Rogers, Conan the Barbarian, Sam Spade and the Maltese Falcon. What they have in common is that they were all created for pulp magazines. Now I'll give you some authors. Edgar Rice Burroughs, Max Brand, Earl Stanley Gardner, Dashiell Hammett, Ray Bradbury, Robert Heinlein, Talbot Mundy, all best-selling authors of the 20th century. What did they all have in common? They all began their careers in pulp magazines. Now, what were pulps? They were, as the name implies, magazines that were printed on cheap pulp paper. They were all fiction magazines. They started at the tail end of the 19th century as a popular medium for storytelling for the masses, fiction for the masses. Uh, the 19th century, the end of the 19th century, was the perfect time for something like this to come along because there were not only technological developments but also cultural developments that made it popular for the American public to read for amusement rather than simply for education or for religious indoctrination. I mean, up to that time, you know, the Bible and Pilgrim's Progress were probably the, the largest selling books. But the invention of the high-speed steam presses cheap manufacture of pulp paper, which was ground from wood chips, uh, along with such innovations as electricity and modern devices that, that made housework uh, uh, easier to, to, to handle, gave the American public more leisure time. And in those days before radio and television, and even before movies, reading was a, a popular form of entertainment, so the pulp sprang up to satisfy that demand for popular fiction. Now they had had antecedents in the days before, just before the Civil War, there were what you call story papers, which were full-size tabloid newspapers devoted entirely to fiction. Some of these were published by a New York company called Street and Smith, which became the most, arguably the most prominent publisher of pulp fiction later on. The story papers were followed by the dime novels, which as the name implies were novel-length, soft-bound uh, stories of novel-length that sold for a dime, and also by the nickel weeklies, which were not always a nickel, sometimes they were five cents, six cents, or eight cents. They were in a format to closely approximate what comic books were. They were soft covers, they were saddle-stitched, rather than being bound like books, and they ran anywhere from 16 to 32 pages, usually with full-color covers. Uh, it was the nickel weeklies that gave rise to heroes like Frank Merriwell, Nick Carter, uh, Old King Brady. These were heroes who were, had different backgrounds. I mean, Frank Merriwell was primarily sports, Nick Carter was a detective. But these characters appeared in stories that had certain situations, character types, um, that became very popular in pulp magazines. And as we discuss this, I, something I'd like you to keep in mind is that the pulp tradition, this tradition of particularly in genre fiction, adventure fiction, mystery fiction, later science fiction, that derived from the pulps is still with us today. That the same storytelling ideas, the same concepts, the same character types, uh, plots even, have filtered down to the movies and television of today. They're still being used. So it's important to remember that the pulp magazines, while certainly not any great literary achievements in and of themselves, did have tremendous influence on American popular culture, and indeed, they continue to exert that influence uh, to the present day. So I have some samples that I want to show you. The first of the 
pulp magazines <clears throat> was created by a man named Frank A. Muncy, who was a prolific publisher and apparently something of a, a rogue and a rascal. But he was the one who had the idea of getting away from the so-called slick magazine, which was something printed on coated paper, which was far more expensive to produce, and to go entirely with a fiction magazine that could be produced entirely on pulp paper very cheaply. And his magazine, initially, he had a, ch a kid's magazine, a boy's magazine called the Golden Argosy. That became the Argosy magazine. It started in 1896, and that was the first real pulp magazine. This is an issue from 1923 of Argosy All Story Weekly. Muncy, uh, in addition to Argosy, he also published a magazine called The All Story. Now, it was The All Story in which Tarzan of the Apes first appeared in October 1912. It was uh, not complete in that issue. All Story merged with Argosy. And for a while, they were edited by the same guy, a man by the name of Bob Davis, who not only discovered Edgar Rice Burroughs, but also Max Brand and A. Merritt. A. Merritt was, uh, worked for the Hearst newspapers. He was a very popular writer of early fantasy. Some of his novels include The Ship of Ishtar, Seven Put Footprints to Satan, um, Creep Shadow, Facing the Abyss. Merritt was very popular, as was Burroughs, as was Max Brand. But there were, very, there were many other uh, very popular authors of the pulp era that got their start in the Muncie magazines. Argosy, Wall Story, there was another one called Cavalier. There were several of them. Uh, but Argosy was the biggest seller. In fact, there was a time when Argosy, which was a weekly magazine, was coming out, uh, was being uh, sold at the rate of a thou uh, half a million copies an issue at one point, which is a tremendous circulation. Believe me, there are a lot of popular newsstand magazines today that would kill for a circula paid circulation of a half a million copies. Here's another Argosy from somewhat later. This is Max Brand, who, of course, his real name was Frederick Faust. He was a frustrated classical poet who wrote pulp fiction to support himself. And although he yearned to produce quality fiction and poetry, um, ironically, he achieved no success whatsoever as a poet and is today known to the extent that he's remembered at all as a, as a writer of fiction stories, particularly westerns. He wrote under many, many pseudonyms, George Chalice, uh, George Owen Baxter, Evan Evans. It was Max Brand, as Max Brand, that he wrote a story called uh, Twelve Peers which was printed in book form as Destry Rides Again and became one of the best-selling Western books of all time. Brand was um, a discovery of Davis's who came into the office one day. And this may be an apocryphal story, but it, it has a great ring to it. He came into the office one day in 1917 with a letter of recommendation. And Davis was very skeptical because he had people in his offices all the time who claimed to be writers or who thought that they could sell. And even in the pulp days, it was not easy to, to sell consistently in fiction magazines. You had to be a storyteller of some ability. So Brand said, you know, I'd like to try and submit a story to you. And Davis said, well, I'll tell you what. And he gave him an idea for a story. And he said, uh, go down the hall, third door on the right, and you'll find an empty room with a typewriter and some paper. So some hours later, counts vary as to how long it was, Brand returned with a complete story, 7,000 word story called Convalescence. And Davis read it, and to his amazement, from this neophyte was a totally professional, publishable story, beautifully clean copy, right out of the typewriter. And Davis reportedly said, my god, man, where did you learn how to write like this? And Brand said, down the hall, three doors to the right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Capitan Theater Hollywood, Lieber Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, starring Bob Hope and his special guest, Al Jolson. <laughs> C-O-L. 